Nashville Predators offseason report cards continues with another big gun, Matt Duchesne, the guy who holds the single season goal record, led the team in goals again. But how should we look at his season after what he did last year? Plus a look at Mark Jankowski's season in Nashville. Yeah, Mark Jankowski had a season in Nashville. We'll talk about both today on the Locked on Predators podcast. Your Locked on Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Predators your first listen of the day every single day. We are your free daily Nashville Predators podcast available to you wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. I'm Nick Morgan. I am a writer at Penalty Box Radio and I have a partner in crime. You do. I'm Ann Kimmel. I'm a writer at InsideThePreds.com. And I feel like I should start the show with uh, apology. Okay. Uh, because in celebration on Monday, just for fun, just for giggles, I put on a Toronto Maple Leafs jersey uh, to honor them getting past the first round of 19 years. And they are now 0-2 since I've done that. Two losses at home to the Florida Panthers. Uh, so if you're looking for a reason why Toronto hasn't played up to par. Uh, it's your fault. My, my bad. It's all your fault. Yeah. It's all your fault. Yeah. I'm feeling kind of guilty too for the same reason. When the Milwaukee Admirals won their first playoff game, I was wearing my Rem Pitlick Milwaukee Admirals jersey and the last two games I haven't worn it. Uh, well, Is it all our fault? Are we Neither neither has this? Rem Pitlick, so Hey now. Look. Look friend. You you and I like talked you and I talked earlier this year about jersey curses. Yeah. Like I got like I got a PK Subban jersey and then PK Subban left and I got a um what was it a Victor Arvidsson jersey like mm -hmm. one of those just t-shirt jerseys and then he got traded like a season later. Yeah. Uh so I have a Roman Yossi one in there. I'm hoping nothing happens to Roman Yossi. Uh he did finish second in the in the uh what you, what you call it race last year, the Norris Trophy race. The Norris so Trophy race, yeah. That, that's positive. But uh, yeah, I, I feel like maybe that's just a sign. It's like, you know what? Maybe maybe we should just not wear jerseys. Or wear them all the time. It hmm. could go either way. You know what I'm saying? Do we wear them all the time? Do we not? I have a lucky pair of sneakers that I wear when I go to Predators games as a spectator. And, and I feel very invested in them. Did, I don't know. Why, why do we do this? I mean, did the sneakers work? Most of the time they do. Did they work this year? They did. There was only one game I wore my sneakers to where the Predators lost. Well, why aren't you going to more games? I think that, that's, the, <laughs> the, that, that's the thing that I think we just kind of solved the Nashville Predators problems, didn't we? Look, here's here's what's real. The games that I go to that I work, probably these sneakers are not work appropriate because they are completely rhinestone sneakers, like front to back, top to bottom. They're covered in they are gaudy AF. I they are the manifestation of my great Aunt LC in footwear. I love them, but I'm not sure I can pull them off professionally. I but when I, I wear like... them as a spectator, I I mean there's a thing. Yeah, I, I feel like you should just try them once in the press box. And if you explain the backstory, uh, I'm sure the, the Preds will be okay with that. Well, we'll, tr we'll try it. Yeah. Anything at this point, right? Anything. Yeah. Speaking of trying anything at this point, uh, the Nashville Predators and uh Matt Duchesne. Matt mm. Duchesne is the subject of today's Nashville Predators offseason report card. The guy who one year ago had 43 goals in the season. It was also the Nashville Predators' leading playoff score. Yeah. Uh, didn't quite do that this year. Of course, remember he ended the season on the injury list as a result of the uh, very gruesome mm. finger mishap. Uh, but up until then, a little bit of a setback from where he was a year ago. 56 points, 22 goals in 71 games. Hard to judge, but we're going to do our best. Let's start with Anne. Mm. 
-hmm. are one word to describe Matt Duchesne's season. All right. My one word is champagne confetti popper. Do you know what I'm talking about? The little, they're little plastic champagne bottles. They're like maybe three inches tall. They have a little string on them and you pull the string and they go poo and little confetti comes out. They're okay. festive. Yeah, like confetti popper. Yeah. Yeah. Little confetti popper. They're festive. It makes an occasion special, but it's not a confetti cannon. And you really want a little more pizzazz. So that's kind of where I'm at with Matt Duchesne's season. Like Matt Duchesne, I think, is a really interesting player. I think he's a good player. I think he adds some pizzazz. But this was not the confetti cannon at the end of the Barry Manilow concert that we all want. This was the little champagne popper. Yeah. It's sort of the same thing to uh, Philip Forsberg. Yeah. Minus a Barry Manilow reference. Are, are those the, is, is that what uh, Barry Manilow does at his concert? Oh my gosh. The end of the Barry Manilow concert, there is like confetti and streamers and it's like pounds of confetti and speakers. It's me and my best life in my hockey sneakers all yeah. in one. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Those, those do seem to fit the, the Manilow theme. Totally. My one word for Matt Duchesne is it's kind of on the same line. It's microwave lasagna. You know, when you put like a package of microwave lasagna in the, uh, you know, you're actually cooking in the microwave, mm -hmm. you pull it out and then you take one bite and it's like absolutely red hot. Oh my God, this burns yeah. my mouth. The cheese. Why is there so much cheese and why is it so hot? <laughs> then you take yes. it right closer to the middle and it's like, Oh, this is still frozen. Like, this is, like, solid cold. And that is Matt Duchesne's season to me. <laughs> where it just feels like there are little pockets of the season where it's like you never really knew what bite you're going to get. There are times where Matt Duchesne was absolutely red hot. Mm. Like, one of the best predators on the ice in a lot of games this season. Uh, maybe the best predator on the ice for a handful of games this season. And then there are games in which you're just, you know, kind of watching him. It's like, what's he doing? Kind of feels yeah. like he's, like, going at half speed, uh, not really going to the net hard. kind of, you know, looks checked out sometimes during games. Um you know, not not saying like effort wasn't there or anything like right. that, but just saying like you notice it kind of looked like he was maybe moving a step slower than he does in some previous games. And that's kind of been the case with Matt Duchesne in Nashville. You never know what Matt Duchesne you're going to get. Like sometimes he's red hot. Uh, you love his streak. He's on this goal scoring streak. The Preds are going hot. And then, you know, you take another bite of his season and it's ice cold. And mm. it's, you know, it needs more time to cook and it's, you know, a step slow. So that's to me kind of the story of Matt Duchesne's, not just the season, but it feels like tenure at the Nashville Predators. Yeah, I think that you nailed it on that. And it's so frustrating because, you know, like a microwave lasagna, you know, there are going to be bites that are so good. But then you hit something that's not. And, and I would agree with you. I think that's one of the hard things about evaluating Matt Duchesne's season, especially compared with last season, but also just in general, I think there's a, a bigger conversation about Matt Duchesne's tenure with the Nashville Predators he, on his part and on just the circumstances surrounding his time here. Th there's a lot, there's a lot of story with Matt Duchesne and the Predators. I feel like this is a good episode to have that conversation, man. <laughs> Funny we've done that. <laughs> yeah, funny, funny we planned it that way. Uh, let's do that in just one second. Plus, and there is one moment in particular that I think highlights the stuff that Matt Duchesne did really well this season. And I want to get to that, maybe talk about his big picture with the Nashville Predators. Also, we'll talk about Mark Jankowski today. I mean, before we do that, though, I want to talk about today's sponsor, and that is eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part on it needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. All you have to do is add your ride to My Garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. 
Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. So get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride, baby. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, and exclusions apply. All right, and, you know, we're, we're going through some of the positives and negatives of Matt Duchesne's season. We kind of talked about, you know, there are just moments we wanted a little bit more for him. Mm-hmm. Here's an example to me of the moment that Matt Duchesne had this season that really made me realize it's like, okay, when this guy is on, mm. there's not a lot of people in the Nashville Predators. Do you remember the overtime? against the New Jersey Devils. I think this was the overtime in New Jersey where the Predators came back and won in overtime. Okay. And this was, I think, like the Devils, like only like second regulation loss in, you know, like two months somewhere. It was like when they had that really long streak. Mm -hmm. And if you remember the play, it was a three-on-three overtime. And the Predators went down there, missed a shot, devils had the puck and normally you know when you get the puck you know you're like okay well you know now you kind of have to sit back and play defense it's their turn for puck possession matt duchene says nah man screw that goes and just four checks his little heart out devils weren't expecting that Mm -hmm. winds up you know crushing somebody along the boards getting into a puck battle winning the loose puck and then making just an excellent play to Ryan Johansson in the center of the ice and Joey scored the game winning goal. And I looked at that. I looked at Matt Duchesne's play and we talked about it when it happened. It's like, that's underrated for kind of maybe play of the year yes, for the Nashville predators. Yes. Um, you know, uh, maybe the best non the guy who made it scored play mm-hmm. for the Nashville predators this season. Uh, So I look at that and it's just like, man, when he is like dialed in, when he is aggressive, when he plays to his strengths of using his skating ability to just put other people on the back foot, I'm like, this guy, like there's a reason he was considered one of the best young players in the league for such a long time. It's plays like that. Why aren't we seeing more of those? Because I know exactly the play you're talking about, and it was in, it was incredible. It's like, okay, that's the high level that we brought Matt Duchesne in for. This yeah. is what we need from him. And, and I wonder why there is consistency issues. I hate to say issues, but, you know, why aren't we seeing more of those kind of plays for Matt Duchesne? And and this is the, the question that I come down to when we talk about Matt Duchesne with the Nashville Predators. Is it Matt Duchesne? Is it circumstances around Matt Duchesne? What Define the circumstances around Matt Duchesne. I feel like Matt Duchesne really came into the Nashville Predators, and I feel like this has been a tough tenure for him. So he came in I don't know, and this is just my perspective, but I don't know that everybody was super enthused about that signing as far as other roster players. Well, and- I mean, that's that's because they traded P.K. Subban right. basically to get him. You know, the you P.K.'s yeah. cap space to get Matt Duchesne to sign. Yeah, and he came in during the Taurus, you know, the Kyle Taurus drama, which I'm still bitter about, and the Peter Laviolette coaching change, and then COVID. And I, I, I come back to, have we yet seen Matt Duchesne settle into a role with the Nashville Predators where he is going to have long-term success. We did. Last, he did last, last season. season, right? He did. But why, what was the hitch in the giddy up this season? Which may, when you don't repeat it, and I'm not saying specific statistics, but when you don't repeat a trajectory of play, yeah. what is the anomaly? Like, was it last season the anomaly or what was something this season off that made it not sustainable, not repeatable? I can't get I can't get a grasp on Matt Duchesne and the Nashville Predators. Well, here's the thing. And uh, I'm going to kind of explain this because I don't want this to come off the wrong way. But Matt Duchesne is a player who is at his peak 
when he is with other good players. Now, I know people are going to listen to that and other people are going to be like, well, yeah, no shit, Sherlock. Of course, (laughs) he's going to be good when he's with good players. But what I mean is, is it's more along the lines of this. There are certain players where it's like you put them with, you know, good players and they're going to, you know, play their best hockey. And then there are certain players like you put them on a line with anybody and you elevate everyone on that line because you're so good. Maybe you're not scoring 130 points a year, but you are still playing really good hockey. And as a result, you can put anybody on the line next to you. And Mm. those players are going to be, you know, kind of rise above their station, so to speak. You know, Matt Duchesne, I think the Predators kind of hoped he was going to be that guy that came in and maybe gave a boost to some other people on the Nashville Predators. Uh, It didn't work in that 2021 season. Yeah. Uh, when the Predators, you know, kind of shuffled some depth around, you know, put him, you know, with some, you know, middle six players and a couple of cases, bottom six players. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Matt Duchesne's stats suffered. Um, and I know there are some plays where it's like, you know, he made a really good play or won a puck battle and then, you know, made a perfect setup to somebody in the slot who just shot it right at the logo on the goalie's chest. I get that. Right. But, Oh, over the course of the season, you still want them to excel regardless of the situation they're in. I see. What Let you're me saying. look at Phil Tomasino two years ago, like as a rookie was on the th- fourth line, the entirety of the season still had 32 points for a rookie, which is really good. And not only that, he made Michael McCarron look really good had some really good games nick cousins had some really good games that year so there's you know you can't look at that and just be like oh well you know matthew shane look at him his his teammates were down this year so of course his number's going to be down yeah i get it but at the same time you want to see a player continue his level of play regardless of who's out there with them and i haven't quite seen that from matt duchene And I, I yeah. and, you know, if you're paying him like $8 million to be like a number one center, which they did when he came in, they did. That's, that's a concern. Cause you want him to be able to elevate everybody else. Like look what Paul Correa, when he did here, like look at Steve Sullivan. Yeah. I, I, I completely get what you're saying. And I think that that is a valid point because you know, looking back at last season where he was so successful, so was Philip Forsberg. So was Mikhail Granlund, super successful. Yeah. This season, we did not see the best from Mikhail Granlund, you know, and we've talked about how much does did Granny's struggles play into Duchesne's success. And I think you're right. I think when you bring somebody in like Matt Duchesne and you pay somebody what you're paying Matt Duchesne, he needs to be the tone setter. He needs to be the guy who makes the other guys better, not reliant on other people supporting him. I, I get what you're saying. And, and I, and I can see that. And it is a little bit troubling to me. Yeah. Uh, a little bit. And not that I'm saying like that derails his future. Barry of Trotz course. spoke yeah. very highly of him um, during his introductory press conference. And again, during his end of season availability, and, uh, you know, but the thing is also like, look at, look at some of the numbers this year. There's a stretch where Matt Duchesne had, uh, we're just, it was like 16 out of 18 games with a point between right. December and February. Uh, and then he went on a streak of one, two, three, four, seven games without a point of any kind in March. And then follow that up with five points in three games and then yeah. got hurt. So, you know, you want that consistency to come through, especially for a player like Duchesne, who, you know, your offense is kind of hinging on him. Yeah, I think it will be very interesting as we look ahead to next season, what Matt Duchesne does, because as you're doing a reset for this team and you are perhaps bringing up more consistently these younger players, and we saw it at the end of the season before he was injured. This is a very different role for Matt Duchesne. Like he sort of became the mentor. And I wonder if that is going to be something that brings out what you were talking about in Matt Duchesne. I'm now going to pull the wagon. I'm not riding on the wagon. 
I'm now going to pull the wagon in, in this reset, maybe an opportunity to re-energize that with Matt Duchesne. Yeah. They need Matt Duchesne at his peak, especially as they go they next year. Uh, do you keep him as, as a winger? Do you try to move him back to, to center? I does, it de does it depend on how the other lines shake out, maybe? I think it depends on how the other lines shake out. I think it depends on what moves they make in the offseason. I think so much about Matt Duchesne's future feels like it's tied in with Ryan Johansson. If, you know, Ryan Johansson comes back and is doing well and remains with the roster, I, I think Matt Duchesne makes a, a better winger option. I don't, there is so much to sort out with that, but I, I think he's good either way. I don't think you lose a ton with him on the wing like you would if you tried to put Johansson there. Yeah, I agree too. Yeah. I think I think you can play him any of those three positions and he does well. Uh, letter grade for Duchesne. Uh, what are you B? giving him? What'd you say? B? Oh, I thought you said D and I was like. Oh, no, 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 not, not that low, but. <laughs> Yeah, I would say a B because like you said, we saw we saw some great things from him. I think we saw him at times try to do a little bit too much. You know, he needs to have what I call a Kenny Rogers season next season. No one to hold him, no one to fold him. Like don't push okay. too much, be able to do the right amount. I would say a B. Yeah. No one to walk away. <laughs> no one to run. Yeah. And uh, he's definitely counting his money sitting at the table because he's making $8 million a year. So That's there's right. that. Uh, we're going to get to Mark Jankowski in one second. That's another interesting player. But first, want to mention coming up on Monday's show. Monday is the day. The, the scrubs of the NHL have had circled on their calendar for, let's be honest, about two years now. The Connor Bedard sweepstakes, the NHL draft lottery. So on Monday, we're going to go through and talk about which team's Preds fans should want to win the Connor Bedard sweepstakes. Uh, Preds, of course, can't make it. They're, they're in the draft lottery, but they can only move up to, I think, fourth? I think it's fifth. Third, fifth. Ooh, I can't. Yeah. Yeah, I can remember which which spot they finished, uh, but they only move up 10 spots, so they're out of the Bedard sweeps. So we'll do that. Plus, talk about the draft lottery as a whole, because do we already need to change the format a year after we already changed the format? That's a conversation that we're going to have coming up on Monday's Locked on Predators podcast. All right, we're continuing Preds report cards with Mark Jankowski. Yep. Do you remember Mark Jankowski played uh, for the he Nashville did. Predators this season? A lot of people are like, oh, it's just he's just a spare part, whoever. Seven goals and 12 points and 15 games played, which isn't horrible for a guy that spent some time in Milwaukee down the stretch. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's what's your one word to describe Mark Jankowski season? My one word, I went back to a, a parenting trope that, that, of course, most all parents use and almost all children have heard, and that's, we'll see. Mm. You know, somebody asks you for something and you don't really want to commit one way or the other and you're not really sure how you feel about it and you just kind of want to table it. We'll see. That's kind of Mark Jankowski for me is kind of, we'll see. On a number of levels, there, there were some things that I thought were very intriguing about Mark Jankowski when we saw him play. There were some things that I thought, can we get somebody to bring a little bit more to the table in the role that he is playing? We'll see. Now, remember, the Predators just re-signed him in March to another one-year deal, $775,000 for 2023-24. So ultimately, Barry Trotz and David Poyle are also on the we'll see bus with Mark Jankowski. So that's kind of where I'm at with him. That's my one word. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, to me, and I'm going to go pistachio cream. I have no Mark idea Jankowski. what you're saying. Uh, so do you know like the little box of chocolates? There's always the flavors. There's like the chocolate covered cherry. Mm -hmm. There's like a nougat one. There's like a chocolate cream filled, like a lemon curd. And uh you always get the good flavors first. And there's always like pistachio cream to me. And that's like, that doesn't really sound that great. And so you're like, you, you pick all these other options and you eat all the other options. And soon you're just left with pistachio cream. And you're like, God, 
all right, well, I guess I'll have the pistachio cream. And then you'd bite it and it's like, you know, not not as bad as I thought. Yeah. Like this, it's, it's not as good as a cherry cordial, but, you know, it's fine. It does the trick. Yeah. That kind of was Mark Jankowski for me down the stretch of the season. Like, yeah, I don't think he was the Preds' first option. I think there are other players that I think fans would have loved to maybe see in that spot more. I mean, the Preds did send him to Milwaukee uh, yeah. halfway through the season, kind of unhappy about where he was. Uh, I don't think he's really in their long-term plans. I mean, they signed into a one-year deal, but I think that was right. more of like, uh, let's just make sure we have some depth next year. Yeah. Uh, but then, you know, you, when he was playing, you know, it's like, you know what? He's he's not bad. Yeah. Like yeah. He, is, he is doing the job. He is doing the job. He's not being asked to do... A, you know, to perform in a big role. So you're getting what you're getting with Mark Jankowski. There are a couple things that I like about his game that I think are intriguing. I think one of them is the penalty kill. And I think we need to give a shout out this season as we're doing report cards across the board. Anybody that played on the penalty kill just gets a little extra credit from me because yeah. the penalty kill for the Predators was so key and so good. It was definitely one of the most consistent highlights from the season. Mark Jankowski was one of those guys that was out there in those high pressure situations. He also scored three shorthanded goals. So look yeah. at you, Mark Jankowski. Yeah, you go, Glenn Coco. Uh, That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you he, know, I, I liked some things. There were some. There were some highs for me for Mark Jankowski. Yeah, and he's uh, ended his season with uh, four goal or four points in the last five games of the season. So a little bit of a scoring streak. It did seem like down the stretch, uh, whenever the Predators were fighting for the playoff spot, it was like Jankowski made that play. Like Jankowski's yeah. on the score sheet again. Like, yeah. There's a lot of those moments, like towards the end of the year too. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, Mark Jankowski is one of those guys. He's an NHL veteran. Uh, he's had some experience. He's kind of been a fourth line staple for a lot of different teams. And now he came to Nashville. Remember, he he was one of the players that won a spot at the beginning of the season. And a lot of people kind of forgot about that because that was shuffled in with the Tomasino going down. And right. uh, he for sure would kind of surprisingly making the roster. So I think a lot of people forgot about that. But you know, Jankowski, you know, he played his role. He played his role well and a, a good penalty killer. Yeah, I mean, I and him re-signing in, I don't hate it. I don't. You know, like I said, I think there's maybe some better options out there. But, you know, for, at this point for the Nashville Predators, it doesn't hurt bringing him back. You know, just keep the depth going. And, mm -hmm. hey, if he makes the team next year, he makes the team next year. If he's in Milwaukee, he's in Milwaukee. Yeah, I would like to see him on in in kind of that bottom, you know, bottom six role, a fourth line role with a couple other maybe more support players. You know what I'm saying? Like he ended up, you know, playing at the end of the season with Michael McCarron and Rasmus Asplund, Igor Afanasiev, Zach Sanford, John Leonard. So he kind of had a, a, a revolving door of line mates. I'd be curious to see if they picked up some you know depth pieces that they felt like were going to be consistent pieces. I would be very curious to see how Mark Jankowski does if there is more oomph for him to play with. Like this is a player who you know again this is not going to you know the, he was not the star of the Nashville Predators, but this is somebody that is intriguing to me moving forward. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll see how things go for Mark Jankowski. Um, letter grade solid C. Solid C. Yeah. Like C plus just because, you know, didn't didn't impress. But, you know, other than a couple of games here and there, didn't really screw much up either. Yeah. Yeah. I will also say just throwing it out there and I'm going to put on my Admiral's jersey and my rhinestone sneakers tonight. But I would love to see Mark Jankowski get on the score sheet tonight in Milwaukee's do or die game against the Manitoba Moose tonight. Does have two points in three games. He does. He does. And uh, playing with Phil Tomasino. So mm. let's work a little magic there, fellas. Yeah. He was like Milwaukee's best scorer at the beginning of the season. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. He, I, I, I really, there's something there. There's something there. What can we do with it? I don't know. Huh. But there's something there. So let's see. Let's see what they do tonight in Milwaukee, y'all. Yeah.
uh, we will uh, find out. We'll keep an eye on Mark Jankowski for the first time in a long, very long <laughs> time. Uh, yeah, that's our shows for the week. Monday is the draft lottery day, so stay tuned, and we will have plenty to talk about that. And on Tuesday, of course, we will see which team is going to have the Connor Bedard factor. That's right. And where can people find your work? You can find my work online at insidethepreds.com. You can find me on Twitter at ANK underscore Mama on Ice. You can find me at penaltyboxradio.com. Follow me on Twitter at underscore NS Morgan. Also follow the show, LO underscore Predators. And please subscribe no matter how you're listening, whether it's YouTube or your favorite podcasting platform really helps us out that's going to do it for us on today's locked on predators podcast thanks for making us your first listen of the day we will be back monday with all new episodes we'll see you then